Hello, my name is Kishwani. This K E S H W A N R Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the math portion of the JRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the JRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. The problem that we are about to work on is the one that you will find on page number 118. We are given, a, we are given an equation, fx equals to absolute value of 2x plus 4. And the question simply is, which of the following five graphs, which of the five graphs that they give us will eventually intersect with this graph? Now, if you have not watched, if you have not watched day 10, today is day 11, if you have not watched day 10, make sure that you watch day 10 first because this is the continuation, this video is the continuation of what I did yesterday where I spent almost 20 minutes uh, where we learn in depth as to what it means uh, uh, what, 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 does the word, what does the concept of slope mean and what is going on with the other four graphs that we ruled out and we found out through the process of elimination yesterday that the answer to this question was E what I want to do in this video is to explain to you why? As opposed to simply doing the process of elimination, let's, first, let's understand actually why the answer is E. So here's the graph that is given to us. fx plus 4, when x is 0, when x is 0, 2 times 0 is 0, the y is going to be 4. This f of x is same as, this is read as f of x, which is the y value, and when x is 0, y is going to be 4. x is 0 along, along y axis, when x is 0, y is going to be 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and the graph has a shape something like this, with a slope of 2, which is right here. All of these things is what we talk, learned yesterday, what we talked about yesterday, uh, and so forth. The very, first, uh, the very first answer choice that they give us on 118 is x minus 2 x x minus 2 when x is 0 y is going to be negative 2 so this starts out with negative 2 here but it has a slope of 1 this this one has a slope of 1 this has a slope of 2 so this line is not as steep is 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 uh, it's uh, what's the word I'm looking for it's not as steep it's going to look something like this let's put it in a different color So it start it goes through here and it's, it's it's very shallow. It's not as steep. So this line will never intersect with the graph that is given to us because it has a slope of one, which means every time x goes up by one, the value of y, the value of the equation goes up by only one, hence the slope of one. Whereas this one has a slope of two. So they're going as the time goes by, as the x value gets higher and higher and higher, they're going to be farther and farther apart. Do you understand? And we don't have to worry about this area here because of the absolute value, it just goes up here. It doesn't continue down here. The second equation that they gave us was x plus 3. Same exact logic, same exact argument. x plus 3. When x is 0, when x is 0, y is going to be 3. So it starts out here. Well, I shouldn't say start out, it starts out here. Rather, what I meant is that the y intercept, uh, y intercept of this line is at 3. But again, same thing. This line has a slope of 1, just like that one. They have both have a slope of 1. So this line, this should say b. This line b is parallel to a. It is parallel to these two lines are parallel. Let's call it line b and this, let's call it line a. But as you can see, they, 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 they get farther and farther apart as time goes by, as x value goes up. So A and B were not the answer. C, D, and E are the possible contender, uh, contender. Well, actually not really. We'll see in a second. Let's look at C. C, 2x minus 1. 2x minus 2, rather. 2x minus 2 was the C here. When x is 0, when x is 0, this value drops out. 
when x is 0, y equals negative 2. So this one starts out at negative 2 here, same place as this guy, right here, you see, they have the same y-intercept, but it has a higher slope, it has a slope of 2. It has a slope of 2, same as that guy. So this line, the green line that I'm about to draw, is going to be parallel. LC, the line LC, the green line that I just plotted, is parallel to this here. So this line right here is parallel to this given graph. Let's call it the, the original graph. But they're calling it f of x. They're calling it f of x. For the this portion of the graph. So again, as you can see, this line right here is parallel to this line. And because they are parallel, they will never intersect. Same thing happens with D. D is 2x plus 3. D is 2x plus 3. When x is 0, y equals 3. So this one starts out at this guy right here. And it's going to be parallel. Let's see if I can find entirely different color so we can see it. How about the red one more time? It's going to be parallel. As you can see, these two are parallel to each other. They will never touch each other. Let's see why the answer choice is E. I need the room, so I'm going to erase all of this thing, except I'm going to leave these four here. In answer choice E, is 3x minus 2. 3x minus 2. Now because it is 3x, this has a slope of 3. Every time x goes up by 1, the y value is going to go up. This is the f of x, which is the y value. Every time x goes up by 1, the y is going to go up by 3. 3 times 1, 2 times, uh, uh, 3 times 1, 3 times 2, 3 times 3, and so forth. It's going to go up by 3. So eventually, even though it starts out at negative 2, eventually it is going to catch up. I don't want to erase any of this thing, so we're going to do it here. Uh, which one was the, this line here? Right here, this, this red line was, it has a slope, it has an intercept of positive 3, that was a D. This is line D. And if that's line D, there you go, there is your A, there is your A, line A, there is a line B right here, the line C, this is line C right here, and this was a line D. So we're going to leave those there, let's plot it here. This, this, this is the original graph that is given to us, it has a slope of 3, this one when x is 0, when x is 0, y is going to be negative 2. So it starts out here, 1, 2. Uh, again, when I say starts out, I mean it has a y-intercept here. But even though it starts out so low, but because it has a higher slope, let's see if I can show you in a different color, it is going to eventually catch up. It is going to eventually catch up and they are, they're going to end up intersecting because of the fact that it has it is steeper. So even though it starts out low, it's going to eventually meet. Our job now, as far as the exam is concerned, all of this thing, of course in the exam you don't have one hour to solve one problem, you're doing it for the learning purposes. So all of those things that we're doing right now is not necessary for the exam. As far as the exam is concerned, we were done a long time ago. As far as this question is concerned, it, took, it should take no more than a few seconds to figure out that the answer is E. And I'm going to explain one more time how you figure out. Look at the answer choice along with me. You should have the book in front of you. If you look at the answer choice A, you should immediately realize it has a slope of 1. If it has a slope of 1, that line will never catch up with the original graph which has a slope of 2. They will never intersect. That will always remain lower. Same thing with answer choice B. It has a slope of only 1. It will never catch up with the original graph. 
C and D are parallel to the graphs that is given. Answer choice is D, E. As far as the exam is concerned, this question to, should take no more than 15 seconds, 20 seconds or 25 seconds if you're slow. The reason why I'm spending 24 minutes in the previous video and another probably 10-20 minutes in this video is because of the learning purposes. Okay, This is just purely for learning purposes what we're doing here. What we're trying to figure out is what is this point? What is this point of intersection? Where? At what value of x? At what value of x are they going to intersect with each other? That's what I want to find out. So let's do it here. Let's do it here. Again, I need a lot of room. And as I put stuff here, I, I don't want to erase things, and now I'm running out, of, uh, running out of room completely. So here's our f of x. And here is our g of x. And here's the value of x. When x is 0, you should have the equations with you. This is the g of x here. And f of x is right here. So, I'm going to do it here. Hello, stay with me. I'm not going to put down all the details here. You just have to stay with me. When x is 0, we put 0 in here, 2 times 0 is 0, plus 4 is 4, x, f equals 4. When x is 1, this is going to go up by 2, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 4 is 6, it's going to go up by 2, which is why, it's called, which is why we say it has a slope of 2. When x is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 plus 4 is 8, you see again it went up by 2, f of x that is. When x is 3, this is going to go up by 2 again, this is 10. When it is 4, it's going to be 12. When it is 5, it's going to be 14. When it is 6, this is going to be 16. Don't ask me why I start with 6, okay? Now let's do the g of x, this is a g of x. When x is 0, 0 times 3 is 0, minus 2 is just minus 2 right here. Now what happens when x is 1? When x is 1, 3 times 1 is 3, 3 minus 2 is positive 1. What happened? It went from negative 2 to positive 1. As you can see, it went up by 3. The value of g, the graph gx, that is function gx, went up by 3. Why? Because it has a slope of 3. Every time, slope of 3 means every time slope tells you how much does y change every time x changes by one unit, which is what I did in the previous video, explain the concept of slope. So now when x goes from 1 to 2, the value is going to go up by 3 again. I don't have to do all the calculation again. We should realize that if it was 3 before, it will be 4 now. It will go up by 3. But if you want to verify it, you can do that right here. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 minus 2 is 4. Follow. You see, it went up by 3. If it's 3 before, it should be 7 when x is 3. Let's, you'll find out here. When x is 3, 3 times 3 is 9, minus 2 is 7. What do you know? and so on and so forth. As you can see, it's going up faster than this guy. Because it's going up faster than this guy, eventually it will catch up and they will intersect. We want to find out what is the value of x when that happens. So when x, when x is 4, this is going to go by 3 again, which is 10, then it's going to be 13, and then it's going to be 16. Voila! That is our point of intersection. Right here. That is our point of intersection. The graph E, the graph that is given to us in answer choice E, will eventually intersect with the original graph when x equals 6. Now here's the last part I want to do before, before I end the video. The question now is, question now is, is there, is there quicker, more efficient way of finding out this point of intersection instead of doing it manually like we did here? And the answer of course is yes. There is a mathematical way, there is an algebraic way, as opposed to a childish way, what we just did here, of finding out at what value of x are these two graphs going to intersect. And what we have to understand is that when they intersect, wherever they intersect, the y value is, is equal. x values are equal. That's why they call point of intersection. At the, at the point of intersection, the reason why it's called point of intersection is because they share a point. Uh, if they share a point, then the x value for the first function and the y value of first function at that point, the x coordinate and the y coordinate are the exact same x coordinate and y coordinate for the other graph. So if you plug in a certain value of 
if you if we equate the value of y, see this is the y value of the blue graph here, which is which is our graph that is given to us in answer choice E. Let's call it line E as opposed to A B C D. And this is the original graph that is given to us. The y value at that point, if we were to equate to each other, we can find out when that when we can find out at what value of x will those two y values equal. We already know the answer. It will happen at x equals six. We're going to show now algebraically, mathematically, without having to do all this childish way. We're going to quickly show you. We're going to quickly show us show ourselves that the point of intersection is when x equals six. So here's our original graph here. 3x minus 2, and that value of y, this value of this graph, has to equal the value of that graph, which is 2x plus 4. Now the fact that it's absolute value, we don't have to worry about it because we're talking, we're dealing with the positive territory anyway. You saw, you just solve this equation for x. Bring the 2x here, 3x minus 2x will be x, and bring the 2 over there, and positive, it will become positive 2, and voila. That's it. This, this this three second process, this three second process is what we were doing here manually. This is algebraically. So we know already that, that they will, we knew already of course in the very beginning that they would eventually intersect because one has a high, steeper slope than the other so they will eventually catch up. This, this bottom line, the blue line will eventually catch up but we also know now that it will catch up and x equals 6. Now one last thing I'm going to do before I end the video, I'm going to show you here what would happen if we were to equate, if we were to do the same manipulation for the answer choice C and D. Let's do C and D. Let's do C first. C says 2x minus 2 equals, here's the original graph, 2x plus 4. What happens if we, if we try to bring the x on, both, on, on this side? If we try to bring this 2x, if we were to try to bring the 2x on that side, it will cancel out. Because the x's drop out, that is the mathematician's way of telling you that these two lines are parallel. They will never ever intersect. Do you understand? That's it. The answer choice A and B, those two, answer choice A and B would have had, would have had a point of intersection had this line not continued going up, had it not been an absolute value. Had this, this line continued down, as you can see clearly, it would, it would eventually uh, intersect in some negative territory here. But that is not the case because of the absolute value, it has, a, it has a V shape and therefore we only have to worry about the positive part. Because no intersection is going to take place here. Any kind of intersection that's going to take place is going to be in the first quadrant. That was it. I'm done. I feel better now. It's out of my system. I wanted to do it because I'm, I didn't want to do some... Uh, uh, oh boy, a word come to, comes to my mind here. Where can I put this word? Where can I put the word? Let's put it here. I'm a, it's out of my system. I feel better. I didn't want to do it in a cursory manner. I wanted to take my time, so we did it. Cursory means to do something in a haste. The adverb for cursory would be cursorily. Cursorily. Where can we put it? C U R S O R I L Y. Cursorily. I'm looking here in my cards here as to when we learned this word. In addition to this video that you're watching right now, you will also find on my channel some videos that will help you improve your vocabulary, especially if you're preparing for the SAT, GRE, or GMAT, which of course you are, otherwise, otherwise you wouldn't be watching this video. Cursorily. There you go. Day, day number 22. Day 22. Just type in, just type in vocab, vocabulary, day 22 and you will find this word cursorily learn it that's it i will see you tomorrow on day number 11 okay or rather day number 12 right